Yo, this is Teresa Weatherspoon, better known as Teaspoon, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. Live from the camp. Uh-huh. This is Real Fans, Real Talk. Real Fans, Real Talk. We as real as you thought. We had a great championship race at Phoenix this year. Uh, it came down to the championship four, who came down to Kyle Larson, who was the most dominant driver this year, uh, with uh, 10 wins and led the most laps. We also had defending cup champion Chase Elliott in that final four. We also had former cup champ Martin Truex Jr., uh, who was the champion in 2017. And... Uh, we also had Dan Denny Hamlin, one of the greatest uh, NASCAR drivers ever to not win a championship. And uh, with this race, it, every single part of this race, it at least one part of the race, uh, each of the four had a chance of of winning the title. And it never felt like one driver uh, of the championship four had a complete uh, dominance over the others in this race. Each each one, it, it, it honestly was a race where anybody could have won it. And uh, it started out with Kyle Larson on the pole, uh, and he led the a decent part of the first part of the race, but then his teammate Chase Elliott would eventually pass him. It seemed like the uh Martin Truex Jr. and his teammate Denny Hamlin uh would uh, kind of be the forgotten um would kind of be the forgotten drivers in this but what ended up happening is the Hendrick cars and the teammates of Larson and Elliott were very good on the short run uh they could go off for about 20 30 laps and be the best cars on the track. But then the Gibbs cars ended up, of uh, Martin Truex Jr. and Denny Hamlin, uh, they ended up where they would actually uh, be good on the long run. They, would, they were horrible the first 25, 30 laps of a run. But man, once the 30 laps kicked in, they were maybe the best cars on the track. Uh, uh, nobody was close. Their car would just... Uh, be more consistent than everybody else's. It wouldn't fall off. And uh, basically at the end of the stage one, Martin Truex ended up passing both. Uh, Martin Truex ended up passing both and taking the lead uh, in one stage one. Then in stage two, it was Chase Elliott's turn. He got back up front again and was dominating stage two. And, but like before, <laughs> uh, El Elliot and Larson, they were up front, but they couldn't keep it. Eventually, Truex and Hamlin would get, uh, would get back around them. Uh, but at the end of the stage, uh, basically, uh, a caution would come out and it came down to a short run and Larson was able to get back out of, up front. And he was able to win stage two. And uh, when it came to stage three, uh, Elliot took the lead, and Carson started, and Larson started to struggle. Um, and Elliot led for a long time, but eventually it went on a long run, and Martin Truex Jr. and Denny Hamlin would eventually pass them, and then. Uh, it ended up having a long green flag run. And uh, halfway during that run, it seemed like they were going to go to green flag pit stops. And it, it started to happen, and uh, Martin Truex Jr. ended up pitting, and the caution came out, which you would think that he would get stuck a lap down. But lucky for him, it just happened to come out at just the right time. It came out right when he was on pit road. So all he had to do was finish up his pit stop, get back out. And as long as he passed 
uh, as long as he passed, uh, the leader before, um, the caution, uh, before he got to the start finish line, he was good and he would stay on the lead lap. And that's what happened. And what ended up happening since he already got his pit stop done, everybody else had to come down pit road and basically because he got his pit stop done and he didn't have to come back in, Martin Truex would end up with the lead. And Hamlin ended up having a really good pit stop. And he came out second, and Elliott and Larson fell back to third and fourth. Uh, and at this point, all four championship drivers were dominating this race as far as the overall running. They were basically the top four of the championship all year, and they ended up being the top four in this race as well and uh but it could always go between either one of them but what was awesome for the gibbs guys since they had those two lead positions and they were horrible to begin with uh, that helped them because they were out front uh, they had the clean air uh, that allowed them their cars to work better and uh, chase elliott was able to pass one but not the other uh basically and Chase was constantly chasing Truex the entire time. And eventually, Denny Hamlin would get back around Chase because his car worked better on the longer run. So it looked like the Hendrick guys were out to lunch at this point uh, because the long runs, Gibb cars were good. Then come with 20 laps to go. A caution comes out for a break, uh, broken brake rotor that's on the track. Um... Basically, everybody comes down, and basically everybody comes down pit road, and the order is Martin Truex Jr., Denny Hamlin, Chase Elliott, and Kyle Larson. And at this point, Kyle Larson's looking like the fourth best car out of the championship four. Uh, it looks like he doesn't have a chance, but... One thing that most people don't realize about NASCAR is it is a team sport. And with this, the pit crew does uh, help in a lot of situations. Uh, and they're kind of like the kicker uh, in football. The kicker always gets all the glory when he hits it, but always gets all the blame when he doesn't. And that's how, how uh, the pit crew is. When, when they get them out front, they get all the glory. When they fail, they don't get anything. But boy, uh, man, did Kyle Larson's pit crew jump up. In the last pit stop of the season, Kyle Larson's crew did their second best stop of the season. And they went from fourth to first and passed the other three cars on pit road. And the other crews, they wanted it just as bad. They had just, and they had great pit stops. Just Kyle Larson's crew wanted it that much further, uh, just wanted it that much more. And man, they got out. And once Kyle got that lead and they went back to racing, there was no looking back. <laughs> that Truex gave him all he could handle. Uh, and he was going after it. But man, you give Kyle Larson a lead. Uh, with, fresh, with clean air and just give him a halfway decent car, it's going to be hard to pass pass him. And sure enough, that's what happened, and he ends up coming away with the championship. Kyle ended up getting his 10th win of the year, ended up with 20 top fives, 26 top tens, and 36 races, and broke the all-time record for most laps led in a season. Uh, that Jeff Gordon hold, held up to that point. And um, with that, that's that's, that's an amazing dominant season. And uh, congratulations to Kyle Larson in that five team. With this, this was truly a team win championship. The pit crew got him out front. They were the best pit crew all year. The number five team was the best car all year. They definitely deserved this championship and they got it. So uh, congratulations to Kyle Larson and that five team for winning the championship. Thank you.
a little preview for next season. Next year, we're going to be driving a new car called the Next Gen Car. This car is, uh, they've been testing it out here recently, and it is a complete game changer for the sport. Nobody's driven this car other than these tests that they've been doing. And next year, it's going to be a complete, um, this year, this next year is going to be a complete mystery of who's going to be dominant, who's going to uh, win the most races. Um, you can't really gain anything uh, based on testing or anything because they're just you know, testing these out and seeing what's going to happen. But what I can definitely say here is it's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. And it's going to be challenging. Uh, right now, it sounds like these cars have no forgiveness when they start to get loose and out of control, which is what the drivers wanted. The more challenging the car, the more fun it is for the driver. Um, and also, it really brings out the talent and skill of the driver as well. And uh, with this next year, we're going to definitely see who the best drivers are, uh, because whoever can figure out how to do uh, who d who can drive this car the best is definitely going to be the best drivers because of all the cars coming from a vendor. They're not building this on their own uh, other than the parts inside. Um, it's going to be an equal playing field for everybody, including the lower level teams. So you might have some lower level teams start to come, uh, start to come up. So, uh, it's going to be definitely an exciting, exciting year. Um, and, it, uh, with this, I, I can't wait to see what happens. Um, I, I'd say you still probably going to have your Hendrick, your Gibbs, but this, this, since everybody's on an equal playing field, um, Track house might be better. Um, 2311 with Kurt Busch coming over uh, in his experience. Expect them to be a challenger for a playoff spot. Um, you might see uh, some smaller teams like uh, Front Row Motorsports and also maybe Spire Motorsports. Uh, and the new coming... Um, a uh, cup team of um, uh, college racing. They might be challenging for a playoff spot. Next year, I think we could legitimately say there could be 30 to 35 teams that could have a legitimate uh, chance of being uh, in contention for a playoff spot or ha have, have the equal level um, talent of being able to do that. And that's going to definitely, um, that's definitely going to bring a lot um, of attention to the sport, I think. Um, and it's going to be exciting, like I said. Uh, so definitely keep, keep a lookout for next year uh, and with this new car. Uh, and yeah, it, it, it's a complete wild card and I can't wait. Thanks, and have a great day. Right, this is your African King to come, Michael Blackson. You're watching Real Friends Real Talk. Get real with it, my son.